How's it going everyone? Phil here from Ferris Technology. So you've just picked up your iPad Air fourth generation and now it's time to turn it on and set it all up. So I'm gonna go through the setup process right here and this will be the first screen that you see right here. So we're actually just gonna go ahead and swipe up and this is where it's gonna ask you to pick the language preference. Mine is English and I am in Canada. So I'm gonna pick my country of Canada, which it has pre-selected right there. We can set up manually. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Set up manually. I'm gonna connect it to my Wi-Fi network right here. Once I've typed in my password, I'm gonna click on join. And once it's connected to my network, it's gonna take a minute or two right here. Sometimes it might ask to update. So let's just go get ahead and give it a second here and we'll see what it says. Data and privacy, so you can agree to their privacy terms. This is essentially Apple uses your information to make better applications and to make ads and stuff more associated to you. I mean, you can disagree with a lot of it, but essentially they have all that information already. So let's just go ahead and type on continue. Uh, now, at this point, we can set up the Touch ID. Touch ID, we do have built right into the actual device right here. So let's go ahead and set up the Touch ID. We're gonna go continue right here and we're gonna place the finger. So I'm actually just gonna grab the iPad right here and we're gonna just place my finger on there. It's gonna read it and then you just wanna lift and place, lift and place. Don't press on the actual button. You're just kind of resting your finger on the actual thing so it can scan. So it's a scanner. You're not pressing the button for it to scan. You're just resting your finger right there. And you're gonna have to do this probably about 10 times or so. Once it's done, it's gonna say continue, then it's probably gonna ask to place it again. So let's go ahead. There we go, capture all your fingerprints, perfect. We're gonna hit continue, almost done, there we go. So we're just gonna repeat the process a little bit. Again, we're just placing, we're not pressing the button. So we're just gonna continue doing that right there. And it's almost done. We've almost got it, maybe a few more. There we go, fingerprint has been added. We'll just go ahead and tap continue. We can add another fingerprint at this point. So if you wanna use another one, you can. For the purpose of this video, we're just going to skip and set up in settings later. So we're gonna go ahead and press that. <clears throat> now we do need to create a passcode for your iPad. So let's go ahead and look at what passcode options we have. We can use the numbers that it has associated right here. So we have six digits, or if we go on passcode options, you can do a custom alphanumeric code, uh, custom numeric code, or four digit code. Um, for an iPad, because I'm using it at home, I'm gonna select four digit code. We're just gonna make it as easy as possible. And I'm gonna go ahead and select which four digit code I want. Now that I've entered in my four digit code and verified it, we're gonna go continue. And at this point, now we can restore an iCloud backup or restore from your Mac or PC, transfer directly from another iPad, move data from Android or don't transfer data at all. So if you have a previous generation iPad, you can actually transfer all your information directly from iPad to iPad. So there's several different ways you can do it. You can read through and decide which way you wanna do it. Or if you're just setting up a brand new iPad, you're just gonna go don't transfer it data and app. So we're gonna go ahead and just select that, don't transfer apps and data. Um, and we're gonna assume this is a brand new iPad. And I wanna add in my Apple ID. So if you have an Apple ID created already, then you can go ahead, type in your email address, uh, which is your Apple ID username and then type in your password. If you've forgotten this information, you can click on forgot password or don't have Apple ID and you can set one up. Um, or you can use uh, different Apple IDs for iCloud and other services as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my own Apple ID right here and then we're gonna log right in. If you have two-step verification turned on, once you've entered in your Apple ID, it may give you this message where you have to enter a verification code from another Apple device. This is a good thing so that your username and password cannot be stolen uh, from one device and logged in. So I'm gonna go to my iPhone and just click on allow, and then it's gonna show up with a code on my iPhone, and I'm gonna enter that code right into here right now. Entered that code, and now it's asking me to accept the terms of service. I'm gonna make sure I go ahead and read all of those Okay, let's just assume I've done all of that. We're gonna click on the agree and then it's just gonna take a second or two here to set up the iPad. Terms of service again, we're gonna go ahead and assume we've read all of that and we're gonna click agree on those ones again, just twice right there and it's gonna continue setting up. 
These are some default settings that they have set for you. So you can change all these things if you want for Siri and for maps, but we're just gonna go ahead and continue for the purpose of this video. If you wanna go back and change all of these things, you can go ahead and do so. Keep your iPad up to date. Yes, that's good. We wanna make sure that our iPad's always up to date. So we're gonna click on continue. If you use Apple Pay with your iPad, this is where you can set up Apple Pay. I personally use Apple Pay on my Apple Watch and my iPhone. I don't use it on my iPad. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up and setting it later just so I can skip this process. If you wanna enter in your Apple Pay information, you can go ahead and click on the continue button, but I'm just gonna click set up in settings later. We'll go ahead and do that. Improved Siri dictation. So this is something where all of your Siri voice inputs on the device. So if you say, Siri, what is this? Or Siri, what is that? Then it can actually go in and record that, send that to Apple, and Apple can use that information to make Siri a lot better. I mean, personally, I think they do this already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go share audio recordings. And screen time, this is where you can get weekly reports on how you use your device. You can go ahead and set this up in settings later if you want to, like I'm going to do, or you can set it up right now. Um, I don't really care to do so. It's gonna be just me using this iPad. It's not gonna be my kids or anything, and I don't really care about seeing the screen time report. And iPad analytics, so this is stuff that's done within your iPad where you can share it with Apple, so to help better improve the experience for the future. Again, this is something that I think that they do already, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on share with Apple. And app analytics, same type of thing. Do we wanna share the analytics of apps to help improve them with developers? I think it's a good thing to make apps better. So we're gonna go share with app developers. True tone display, this is really cool because your iPad will actually adjust the back lighting and stuff based on how bright the area that you're in. I definitely think it's a cool thing to do. So it's definitely something you should keep on. So we're gonna go ahead and just keep that on and tap on continue. Now this is an appearance thing that you can tick. So if you want your display to always be kind of bright and you're in brighter areas, then it's probably a good thing. For myself, I really prefer the dark mode that they've offered now on iPhones and iPads. So we're gonna go ahead and turn dark mode on. That's just my personal preference. If you want it to be lighter, you can leave it on light, but I like the darkness. It just makes it easier on the eyes when you go through menus and stuff like that. So we're gonna go ahead and click continue on dark mode. And now welcome to iPad. So let's go ahead and just get started. And there we go. We are all set and good to go. You can see it does have this little one right here. So you always want to click on that to see what type of updates and stuff that we have right here. And it says finish setting up your iPad. Uh, so we want to uh, set up Apple Pay. Nope, we don't want to do set up Apple Pay. So we can go ahead and just skip that. So I'm going to click on set up Apple Pay and then set up in settings later. So we'll go ahead and bypass that and that will just disappear just like that. So there we go. We can swipe up now to get to our home screen and you can go ahead and go into your app store and start downloading apps. You can surf the internet with Safari down here, which is this little icon, music, mail. You can all set up those settings later, but that's your basic initial setup of your brand new iPad Air. If this video was helpful for you, please hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.